I'm your host, Micah Versman, and you're listening to The Producer Podcast. Today, we're excited to welcome back to the show, Micah Gerber. Last time we sat down for a Micah Squared edition of the show, we were talking about how to get your next film project financed. Today, we're excited to be looking at the realm of marketing and distribution and what you should know as you get your film out to the public. So without further ado, let's get started. Thanks for coming back on the show, Micah. Hey, thanks for having me. Ah, this should be a, a very fun time. I, I think it is. We, we always have fun. <laughs> so maybe to start, if you want to just share a little bit about some of your experiences with distribution. Yeah, so distribution is a anomaly right in a lot of ways people are like how do i do it um unless they can get into theaters and even then it's like whoa um a question so i was trying to answer these questions a lot you know several years ago um i think near 10 years ago for me right now um and there wasn't a whole lot out there uh there just wasn't much specifically in the area of short films um, that I was trying to distribute through. It was like, where do I even put this? Other than YouTube, because at the time, YouTube was not a credible source at all. Okay. Even now, I think YouTube is still looked down upon a little bit. YouTube TV is credible, but like YouTube itself is still for vloggers. It's not for your film people. And so, like, if five, ten years ago, YouTube was definitely that way. It was definitely like, oh, your cheap short film showed up on YouTube? Okay, yeah, I'll go watch it. But if you could find a credible source, you know, an Amazon Prime or something, it, it was like, oh, I have the power. I have a real movie. <laughs> um, and so I had shot a couple short films. And I kind of went out on this this limb of trying to figure out how to get my films to people. How could people watch them? And more importantly for me, it, it was just the idea of how do I make money doing this? Mm -hmm. Because and short films were that's a whole different discussion with short films. But but my idea was just like even if I'm making fifty cents, how am I making money? What's the return on investment? Because if people like their like your movie, they'll pay for it. Or they like the right. idea of your movie. And so what people are willing to pay or what people are willing to, what lengths people are willing to go to to access your movie really uh, shows a level of credibility to your film. And so, so much of that was what I tried to discover. I tried to figure out what does this mean? How much work do I have to put in or do I just stick it up on a website and hope for the best? Um, mm -hmm. So that's where I kind of started my journey of just this distribution idea. Okay. Yeah. No, that <laughs> definitely sounds familiar to my journey uh, for sure. And yeah, and I'm still trying to figure it out. <laughs> oh, I am too. It's nothing like it's not going to be solved overnight. No. So I think maybe a good place to start is when does the distribution phase actually start? Because I run into a lot of filmmakers that I find are waiting too far into the production of their project to start thinking about distribution. Yeah, when does distribution start? Um, now, I'm a little. This is a little unpopular opinion, but I think the uh, distribution process starts at conception. So once you've got the concept of the project, you're on a distribution journey. Mm-hmm. Um, Yes, I mean, you're talking about distribution in development. You should be. You should be thinking about 
the process of distribution in your development process because the demographic that you're reaching is so much of your story is answered through distribution. So like if you want to aim for, um, I I guess if you have questions in your story of like, huh, and some screenwriters don't, they'll say, well, I never have questions about my story, but like most people do. They're like, should this be a guy or should this B character be a guy or a girl? Could it be, you know, could it be an old man? Could it be, you know, and they don't understand their demographic. And so they're just like, well, I know this person who could perform the role. When if they really dug into it, they could be like, well, okay, the people that are probably going to watch my movie are this age range. Mm -hmm. Um, Whether that's on theatrical, the particular um, platform, you know, if you're going to AVOD or whatever it is. Um, If you understand your demographic and your main stories um, target audience understanding your B stories target audience then opens up your your horizon so as you're writing a screenplay even understand your distribution so saying okay so if my A story is uh, I'm targeting white males from the age of 24 to 35 so you got your 10-year get age range. Um, you're trying to nail that. Okay, well, who am I leaving out? Well, you're leaving out a lot of people, right? But one of the main groups of people that you're leaving out um, is the fact that 24 to 30, you know, 34 kind of age range and guys, most of them are either dating or getting married. And so you're mm-hmm. leaving out the fact that you've got this whole demographic of women that are either going to hate your movie or love your movie based on whether you include them. Okay. And so a lot of that, I think, is a is a basis, right? So think about that as your screenwriting. Then you kind of leave it a little bit with, with production. I think a basis of production is this idea of marketing. So as mm-hmm. you're producing... What kind of content are you creating that'll create a groundwork for social media posts? Any kind of work. Um, No one's just going to take your film and do all the work for you. Or if they say they are, what they're going to do is they're going to come back and be like, do you have this piece of media content and this piece of media content and this piece of media content? And so many people don't shoot that. Um, Mm -hmm. they don't have a behind the scenes photographer on set. They don't have a behind the scenes videographer on set. Um, they don't shoot interviews. They don't shoot any sort of, they're like, well, that's special feature stuff. No, 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 no. That's stuff that literally, um, connects people with your story. You, you, Mm -hmm. You usually shoot a mini doc, uh, about your movie just so that you can, Get it. And this is short films features across the board. Like, it doesn't have to be amazing. Um, every production I'm on, period, whether it's a commercial or a feature film or a short film, I'm taking behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. Not for the sake of the production company necessarily, but for my sake. Um... And so if it's if it works to promote me, it must work to promote your movie. Right. Cuz people even if they don't completely understand it, kind of want to know, oh, what goes on in the mind of a gaffer? What goes on in the mind of a scripty? What is this anomaly name of a scripty? Like who who's a scripty? You know, mm-hmm. who oh, the first AD, what does that mean? a UPM, all these questions people have, and they could Google it or whatever, but if you offer it to them on Facebook through a Facebook ad, you know, ads are, ads are the way to sell your movie in a feature film world for sure. And I think it might even be a way to do it in short film world too. Um, I haven't tested and proven that, but I've talked with lots of people and that seems to be the direction. Um, there, there could be a, an opening there. 
And if you have content to put in Facebook ads, that's going to be huge. Interviews, all that stuff can be put as a Facebook ad. Mm -hmm. So, so much of that is like understanding what content you need at the base so that you can really move. Um, once your film is cut, complete, signed, sealed, and delivered, you've got your final master, um, your mezzanine file. You can then go and actually say, okay, well, it's on this platform, this platform, this platform, and can execute rather than trying to collect all these assets and put it together. Yeah. Distribution is like the distribution process is like the underlying whole movie. It's it's the thing that sits under the entire production process and is your final success. So if you haven't been doing it at the beginning and you wonder why your film's not working in the end, it it may be story, could be could be production quality could be a lot of things but nine times out of ten it's just like people don't know it exists Mm -hmm. they don't know you exist the number of times i've been on a feature you know feature film or something and people will ask me they're you know what do you do for a living oh i'm a filmmaker oh that's cool uh any movies i've seen before and my my response is like probably not um, I mean, here's a couple of the movies I've been on, but, um, yeah, you probably haven't heard of them because they just didn't get a wide enough release to warrant, or they were under, you know, a paywall that was just absurd, you know, mm-hmm. like a $15 paywall. And I'm like, well, that's the only way you can literally watch the movie is to pay $15. And I don't think the movie's worth that. So understanding that access is key and so Mm -hmm. if they don't know it exists and then if they can't access it cheaply and effective you know quickly they're never gonna you know do it unless they're like a super big fan yeah and that and building that fan base is hard you know i think um a great example of a fan base that go would go to great lengths now it's because they're so good at access creating an access point um but the kendricks Mm -hmm. steven and alex have built an amazing following and people just go to their movies because it's a kendrick movie that's not to say that they aren't good they're all you know they're great but like they go because it's a kendrick movie so there's a side of it where i think you can you can up the ante, you know, Mm -hmm. charge a little more, things like that. Once you have a large following of people that are like, well, every film I've ever seen from them was good. I'll just go anyway. But like at the beginning specifically, you really have to work on the, the accessibility, making it easy, making it cheap, making, you know, so that they have no reason not to follow that ad and just, you know, watch your movie, you know, and then hopefully it's amazing and they continue. For sure. Um, so jumping back to kind of how you're talking, you know, all the behind the scenes stuff now for like marketing content, you know, back in the day, I can remember how, you know, that would all just be on the DVD as special features or special features kind of like going by the wayside from what you've seen like is that not really a a selling point anymore when when marketing a release so i think that partly is a statement on a a release medium um so dvds in a lot of ways have gone by the wayside Mm -hmm. it's not to say that you can't make a lot of money with dvds um and you still usually make a substantial amount of your income on your movie um specifically in the feature film world is from dvd sales um it's nothing to snub your nose at so it's not to say that you can't put your um special features on a dvd um and a lot of people 
still consider that to be like, oh, it's the special features edition. Okay, I'll get that one. Or it's the deluxe yeah. edition DVD. Well, that's it's still special. It's a marketing term, right? It's not actually like right. deluxe. Oh man, I got an extra track of audio or whatever it is. I mean, it's really not as special as they make it. But like, I don't see any reason not to make it free and accessible. That special feature content. And that's the kind of stuff I think you should be posting on your YouTube channel. For sure. Like create a YouTube following. Create a, you know, a, a structure of um, behind the scenes material or I guess you could do a Facebook page. Um, YouTube's a little easier to share content with. So mm-hmm. I would do like a YouTube and then put it on Facebook, put it on Instagram, create this structure of following behind the scenes that allows you to then when you launch your movie, you've created this, you know, fan base that's just ready. Right. And that's the whole point of marketing is preparing the fan base. And I think the biggest thing with that is also understanding your fan base. So understanding how long they're willing to wait for content. So I think this was kind of tying into that initial question of like, when do I start, you know, how early Mm -hmm. do I start telling people about it? So I think it really depends on each project and just you can tell people about the project early but what you have to be careful about is dragging it on too long because it's kind of like Christmas and I think I've used this analogy kind of before but Christmas is a special time but let's say um, my parents buy me a Christmas present Mm -hmm. and they tell me about it in July and they're like, here, we bought you this Christmas present. We're not going to give it to you till Christmas, but this is what we got you. Which, don't do that to anyone. That's horrible. Be surprised. <laughs> but let's say they do that, right? I'm going to forget about it. Most likely, by the time December comes around, if they don't continue to tell me. Mm-hmm. But if they continue to tell me every single month, like, hey, remember, we got you this. Hey, remember, we got you this. I might get a little irritated. I'm like, well, just give it to me now. Like, I don't want to wait for it. I don't want to wait till December. I don't want to wait. I don't want to wait, right? So there's this battle between when do I tell you and when do I not tell you? Um, Because if I tell you, you know, if you tell someone on December 25th, that you got them in the present. Oh boy, I'm surprised. But they also haven't had time to plan. Mm -hmm. Right? So they haven't had time to plan for the release, especially if there's tentative release times. So a lot of people are doing like online, online releases that are only for a week, these theater rooms Um, and stuff like that, that the more time sensitive the release is, the more you need to let people know. A lot of theatrical distribution companies say they need three months to prep before a release. Okay. Um, a minimum of three months. They like six months. But that's mostly asset. So if you have all the assets and you've done this before, you should be good with three months. But like six months is great because most people don't have the assets. Um, so like a lot of it's, you know, who are you calling? Who are you building? You know, what do you have to do to notify people? Well, like if you want to get, um, a radio station to give you a hype or to do an interview or something, you've got to plan that months in advance. Mm -hmm. So that's why like theatrical distribution companies will literally do, six months so there's this thing of just thinking ahead of like knowing this is what i need this is where i'm going um i need to sign up now or i need to do this now you're not telling people necessarily um just like telling people hey we've got an announcement on friday 
but you told them like on Monday, why mm-hmm. can't you tell them on Wednesday? You know, why can't you tell them what, you know, what's the length of time where people start to forget? Because the likelihood of them putting it on their calendar is very slim. Um, I mean, some people will. Uh, your your biggest fans, people attached to the project may put on, you know, a you know, a calendar reminder or something, but most likely they're just going to try and remember and hope that Facebook reminds them or something (laughs) like that. So that really plays into like ads and stuff too, is to make sure that you're really hyping it close to it, but just making sure you're not burning your audience. The reason why I don't like Kickstarters or like crowdfunding tremendously is it's like, prepping people for Christmas before it actually is supposed to happen. Mm -hmm. Um, Because you're getting people all hyped for this deadline, this deadline of, yay, we got the money. And then like a year later, the movie comes out. Well, they've already gotten hyped for the movie back here to build back up that hype. Well, how do you foster that hype, right? That's the question. How do you foster it? So I encourage like, don't hype as much a lot of people do know how to foster it um well i think it's it's a balance and it just it also just depends on your your amount of following what kind of following do you have already Mm -hmm. um i think It's kind of like waiting for a book release, you know, and that's true even for creating content. Like I haven't created a short film of my own in a couple of years. Well, people probably aren't going to think of me immediately as, oh yeah, yeah, he's got multiple short films. I should go watch his short films again, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, So trying to make sure that your content's consistently being released too. So, like, I know yeah. Kendricks are trying to, well, they have succeeded in, you know, creating a film every year, year and a half, maybe two years at the latest, just so that they don't lose a following. Because if you go five years, it's like um, The Incredibles, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Incredibles 2 came out, like, almost a decade later, I think. And everybody was kind of like, yeah, it wasn't nearly as good as the original. I, I heard that so many times. And it's not that it wasn't a good movie, right? It's partly because now they're, like, looking back on it as part of their past. If it had come out, like, a year after, it, it would have had a, a way different effect on the, the audience, I think. So then what advice or tips do you have when it comes to budgeting for distribution? Yeah, money's... A lo- yeah, money. Uh, <laughs> money. So this is a shout out. Go look at the uh, talk on funding and financing um, in season two. Uh, but because I think I talk about this a little bit of just planning your financing um, mm-hmm. to include distribution. I think that's like the biggest thing that I talk to with people when I'm like initially discussing a budget with them is just like, where's your marketing budget? Where's your distribution budget? Cause it's not Mm -hmm. there. Um, it's definitely, that's a major one with feature films, um, where it's just not there and it has to be there for a feature film. When it comes to a short film, I think you have a little bit more leeway uh, with distribution budget, but you need a distribution budget. That's a reality. It's one of those areas where you literally can't get it for free. The way that you do it for free is a major compromise Um, and a major credibility loss, and I just don't think it's actual distribution. Like it's not it's not fair to your product. It's not fair to the audience, um, to not spend the money, and push it. So, the complicated part, right, is when 
your film only cost a thousand dollars, right? Yeah. Two and a half minute short film. It cost you a thousand dollars. How do I budget for this? Well, the principle is half your entire budget is for marketing and distribution. Mm -hmm. And in that marketing and distribution section, um, usually it's about a 50-50 split, marketing, distribution. Um, This is like, and that's pretty industry standard. That's how Disney's doing it. That's kind of, they're creating about a 50-50 split in their budget. So it's pretty easy for me when I'm looking at a budget. I say, well, this is how much production is going to cost. This is how much pre-production is going to cost. This is how much post-production is going to cost. Okay, so I'm at, you know, for a feature film, let's say I'm at $250,000. Okay, it's going to cost me $500,000 to make the movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's the simple way to look at it. That's the easy math. The complicated math is where you, the mistakes you don't know are going to happen. Uh, the legal fees, the, you know, okay, this this particular place had such success that we need to dump a little bit more money there to even get further success. So understanding that it, your base should be half your budget is for marketing and distribution. Okay. That's just your base. That, and that's like the easiest number to throw out there. Everything else gets into nitty gritty. Um, mm-hmm. Why is that the case? Why is there so much money put there? Because you can make so much money. It's it's what's making you money. Um, it's the same. I mean, that's not just in film either. That's literally, you know, you talk to a marketing firm, like a marketing uh, guy who has a marketing firm. He'll tell you every time he walks into a building and starts talking with a company, he looks at their list, uh, he looks at their budget breakdown and says, where's the money for marketing? So it's everybody. It's not just film that struggles with this, but understanding that you need a lot more than you think for, for that. Facebook ads are not cheap. They are extremely mm-hmm. effective. They'll make money. And I say Facebook ads, that's a generalization ads make you money so it could be a facebook ad it could be a google ad it could be an instagram ad it could be whatever ad seems to be effective for your product but that's what's going to make you money it really is it's it's what's going to turn um turn heads it's going to be what exposes your product to the world um and if you don't do that and you don't know how to target ads, and you don't understand SEO, and all you're doing is basically um, maybe you spend money on a website, put a website up, and a Facebook page, and you could do weekly posts even on Facebook and try and do kind of an organic approach. Mm -hmm. You're just not going to get the exposure. You're not going to get the people showing up to theaters in a feature film world or to... Um, your web host, whatever it is, um, whether it's Amazon or whatever, they're not doing any work for you. So, like, I'll get people asking me, so, does, like, the company you work for, do they do the marketing for you? Because people want, people, as soon as they hit, I say people. I do, too. I, I get it. People want you to walk in and say here's my product make it make it so (laughs) make everyone watch this um that's not how the real world works um it's all on the producer uh it's a lot on an executive producer for sure uh but like your more general producers because there's all kinds of producers but like any producer that's staying the entire length of your film from concept to completion is going to feel the burden of distribution because Mm -hmm. they're the people that are working their tails off to get the, 
get the eyes on their product. Um, and if you're a producer who, uh, or if you're a person who doesn't want to go down that road of working with marketing people, working with um, people externally, and you just want to hand a product off, um, you're, you will not make the money you could. And be careful on calling yourself a producer because that is so much of what a producer is, is that work. Mm-hmm. That, that is exactly the work that you're doing is making sure your audience is taken care of. Um, and that's your job. It's a marketing director's job. It's not the distribution company's job to market your movie. It's their job to make sure it's on outlets. So I think that's a, that's a big perspective. Um, you can't just put your product up on Amazon Prime and leave it and expect for, you know, miracles to happen. Um, You can't expect it to go into theaters and just, of course people will show up. A a great example of this, because there's a different, you know, national releases for theatrical, um, you're definitely doing a lot of um, groundwork to foster a lot of different areas. For a week-long mm-hmm. showing, you know, maybe 250 theaters. And you're trying to make sure everyone knows about it. It's a big deal. Um, the idea of four-walling theaters, which is basically targeted, okay, one-night kind of theater showings, um, is a different perspective, but it's a lot of groundwork um, to make sure that people, you know, a targeted area of people are really, really, they really know your films there and that you're just packing this theater out. Um, yeah. But you're able to focus more. But all of this, I mean, people can argue one's easier than the other. All this, It's all work. Mm-hmm. And it just depends on which is more intimidating to you, I guess. And there's all kinds of different ways to distribute. Uh, a lot of people who are in the marketing world for dis- I mean, really, anybody who's doing marketing, period, across the board, not just movies, um, are going to say ads are where your money's at. Because you make ads based on, you make money based on whether people click on your ad. So it like has nothing really to do with whether they actually even watch your movie. It just matters whether they clicked to go look at your website even so i think that's something where when you're talking about a concept of like short films which are really hard to distribute because there's the platforms are being limited that you can distribute it on um amazon prime just it used to be the outlet for short film people and now it's not because you can't um put it on put it on Amazon. So, so much of that is like, what are you doing to do? What are you doing to market and make money through your marketing? What are these external, um, multiple sources of income other than just your movie? Cause that's a huge, I mean, like I think of, uh, it's a funny thing in the movie, but it's actually a real thing. Um, Veggie Tales. When they uh, did the Jonah Veggie Tales movie, uh, yeah. which was the last one through Big Idea Productions, huge, huge deal, great movie, right? But they make a joke about uh, the Jonah plush toy um, and selling the Jonah plush toy, but literally, that was huge because they literally were selling Jonah plush toys, Larry Boy plush toys. You know, ev- you know, people had all kinds of merch. Right. And if you can create a following for your film that people are buying books about your movie and people are buying plush toys and people are buying the, you know, 
companion journal, which is literally blank sheets of paper with a slip cover. If people are buying your your notebooks that cost you 35 cents to make and you know they're buying them for 20 bucks that's like buying a dvd i just think distribution is so much more than just you it's so much more than Mm -hmm. just your story and if that's what you're confining your distribution plan to is just your story just your film then you're you're not going to see financial return positive financial return I say that, it's not to say that there aren't people who have seen financial return, but I'm going that harsh because I think that it's not being thought about. Yeah. It, it, it kind of needs to be that, that harsh in the sense of like, what are, you, what are you doing beyond just your story? And a lot of people are tired at that point. Distribution is the hardest part because everybody's tired. I've seen this movie a hundred times. No one's going to like this. Well, you might be right, but they might like the product that you're selling on the side better than your movie itself. It's just this aspect of what are you doing to make it special? Your film's different. So I think that's part of it is just expanding your idea of what it means to distribute Mm -hmm. and really, really looking at like okay this is this is like selling any product so i want to jump back to something you mentioned uh which was you know how amazon has changed you know what they're doing because even myself like i felt that i made a short film got it up on amazon but by the time i got the sequel done amazon had changed their policy so the sequel's not on there um and really we've been seeing this across the whole industry lately is distribution just changing very rapidly. So do you have any tips or advice for people on how to like stay up to date? Like where do you go to find out what changes are coming down the pipeline that might affect their next film? Uh, wow. Yeah. It's a good question. There's, I wish there was a hub of like, this is what changes are going to happen in distribution. That would save me a lot of time. This is where you can put your short film. This is where you can put your feature film. And this platform is the most effective for TV shows. If that existed, the world would be a better place. Um, but the reality is it, it's kind of like um, copyright law. It's hysterical. I, I In copyright law class or media law class or whatever in college, they told me literally every class, they were just like, so even though that we're learning all this content, it's literally changing as I speak. <laughs> it's so true about distribution because I can, I'm giving distribution principles, mm-hmm. but like actual platforms, they change as I speak. There are people formulating platforms as, as we're talking here, um, that for all I know could be released before this episode is actually on air. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and that's not a long period of time. It's not like a year later or something. So how do you stay ahead of the game? I think a lot of it's trends. What are you seeing your friends talk about? And this is this is a, a advocation for producers being social. Um, yeah. Producer, so much of being a producer is being engaged with the culture mm-hmm. and understanding what cultural trends are occurring, um, what people are interested in spending their money on, things like that. Um, so, and if you're in your fifties or something. What are your kids interested in? And what are their friends interested in? Uh, you know, if you're younger, or a younger producer in your 20s or 30s, you know, what are your friends talking about? You know, where do they go? And I thought it was interesting. Um, I was just talking with a group of people and hearing where they like to watch movies. 
And I said, man, HBO Max has been great um, as a streaming platform. And they were like, and then I was like, and IMDb TV. Well, none of them had even heard of IMDb TV. Mm-hmm. Um, HBO Max, they're like, yeah, that's great. That one's good. I've heard good things. I watched it at my friend's house. I don't have that one. Okay, so, okay, cool. Um, so what do you stream on? Oh, I really love Hulu. Why do you love Hulu? Well, it has all my cop shows. Okay, all right. So if I'm a cop show kind of person, the place that it's going to be is Hulu. You know, so where are people, um, I guess, where are you seeing the content you're creating? Okay. So if they're on the platform that you choose, and some of those things are limited, like short films, right? Yeah. A little bit more limited where you can put them. But let's say you put it on YouTube. But what are you doing to make it show up with other things that people are searching for? Are you able to put it on somebody's channel, you know, get it hyped on the channel, that is directed towards your genre. So if it's fantasy medieval, are you able to put it on a channel? Maybe it's not your channel. Maybe it's somebody else's channel and they're paying a royalty or something. Mm-hmm. But are you able to use that platform where you are? they already have a following and you're able to jump into that following? Or maybe you've created that following and now you've created a short film. I think... Uh, I'm trying to, I think it's called Forge Studios um, in North Carolina. Uh, They do medieval stuff. But their thing is they create short films, but they're actually like a full service uh, cosplay. So they already have a following and their YouTube already has a following and they put all their stuff up on YouTube. They don't put it, they don't go through the folly or all of these other places, Roku, some of those kind of things. So like... You know, Netflix is a, is a huge thing, specifically with uh, people, you know, oh man, I want to get my film on Netflix. Okay, why? What's your, you know, that's what I talk to people about when I talk about distribution. It's like, why do you want to be on this platform? Why does this platform look good to you? Is it accessible to your production? Well, with a feature film, you actually have some access to that kind of stuff. With a short film, you don't have as much access. So... That's, I mean, that's kind of a, a shot at, like, what's the point of a short film, you know? Mm-hmm. Are you going to, you know, if you want to make money, go for a feature film. I think, uh, you know, as I've been thinking about it, I think so much of your return on investment could be through kind of this ad world of, of yeah. ad returns. Your film's up there for free. And that's, and that's true for a lot of people. I know there's a feature film called Found, um, which is a great movie. Go watch it. It's free on Tubi. It's free on YouTube. It's free, like, everywhere. And yet they still make money. Why do they make it? No, it's a feature film, granted. Mm-hmm. There's a lot more, because of the amount of time that you watch it, there's a lot more return through monetization and things like that on places. Um, and they're able to get onto Tubi and some of those kind of platforms. But I think one of the things that I see there is they're able to run ads. They're they're running ads and they're getting a return. It's free, but they're they're getting return based on a click. And that's a huge, huge aspect of of marketing period. So if you can figure that part out for yourself, um, and for your film, what's effective, what's effectively getting clicks. Uh, mm-hmm. then you really start to to see positive return, and it's not just people watching. And with that, we're going to wrap up this episode of The Producer Podcast. Join us next time as we continue the conversation with Micah Gerber and talk film festivals, common distribution mistakes, and what he wishes he knew when he first got started distributing projects. Until then, make sure to subscribe to The Producer Podcast, and thanks for listening.